Chapter 18 of The Social Cancer, a complete English version of Noli Me Tangere from the Spanish of José Rizal by Charles Darbyshire. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Avaí in December 2011. Chapter 18. Souls in Torment. It was about seven o'clock in the morning when Fray Salvi finished celebrating his last mass, having offered up three in the space of an hour. "'The padre is ill,' commented the pious women. "'He doesn't move about with his usual slowness and elegance of manner.' He took off his vestments without the least comment, without saying a word or looking at any one. "'Attention!' whispered the sacristans among themselves. The devil's to pay. It's going to rain fines, and all on account of those two brothers. He left the sacristy to go up into the rectory, in the hallway of which there awaited him some seven or eight women seated upon benches, and a man who was pacing back and forth. Upon seeing him approach, the women arose, and one of them pressed forward to kiss his hand, but the holy man made a sign of impatience that stopped her short. "'Can it be that you've lost the real, Curipot?' exclaimed the woman with a jesting laugh, offended at such a reception. "'Not to give his hand to me, matron of the sisterhood, Sister Rufa!' It was an unheard-of proceeding. "'He didn't go into the confessional this morning,' added Sister Sipa, a toothless old woman. "'I wanted to confess myself so as to receive communion and get the indulgences.' "'Well, I'm sorry for you,' commented a young woman with a frank face. "'This week I earned three plenary indulgences and dedicated them to the soul of my husband.' "'Badly done, Sister Juana,' said the offended Rufa. "'One plenary indulgence was enough to get him out of purgatory. "'You ought not to squander the holy indulgences. "'Do as I do.' "'I thought so many more the better.' answered the simple sister Juana, smiling. But tell me what you do. Sister Rufa did not answer at once. First she asked for a buyo and chewed at it, gazed at her audience, which was listening attentively, then spat to one side and commenced, chewing at the buyo meanwhile. I don't misspend one holy day. Since I've belonged to the sisterhood, I've earned 457 plenary indulgences, seven hundred sixty thousand five hundred and ninety-eight years of indulgence i set down all that i earn for i like to have clean accounts i don't want to cheat or be cheated here sister rufa paused to give more attention to her chewing the women gazed at her in admiration but the man who was pacing back and forth remarked with some disdain well, this year I've gained four plenary indulgences more than you have, Sister Rufa, and a hundred years more, and that without praying much either. More than I? More than six hundred and eighty-nine plenary indulgences on nine hundred ninety-four thousand eight hundred and fifty-six years? queried the Rufa, somewhat disgruntled. That's it. Eight indulgences and a hundred fifteen years more, and a few months over answered the man from whose neck hung soiled scapularies and rosaries that's not strange admitted rufa at last admitting defeat you're an expert the best in the province the flattered man smiled and continued it isn't so wonderful that i earn more than you do why i can almost say that even when sleeping i earn indulgences and what do you do with them sir asked four or five voices at the same time pish answered the man with a gesture of proud disdain i have them to throw away but in that i can't command you sir protested the rufa you'll go to purgatory for wasting the indulgences you know very well that for every idle word one must suffer forty days in fire according to the curate for every span of thread uselessly wasted sixty days and for every drop of water spilled twenty you go to purgatory well i'll know how to get out answered brother pedro with sublime confidence how many souls have i saved from the flames how many saints have i made besides 
even in articulo mortis i can still earn if i wish at least seven plenary indulgences and shall be able to save others as i die so saying he strode proudly away sister rufa turned to the others nevertheless you must do as i do for i don't lose a single day and keep my accounts well i don't want to cheat or be cheated well what do you do asked juana you must imitate what i do for example suppose i earn a year of indulgence i set it down in my account book and say most blessed father and lord saint dominic please see if there is anybody in purgatory who needs exactly a year neither a day more nor a day less then i play heads and tails if it comes heads no if tails yes let's suppose that it comes tails then i write down paid if it comes heads then i keep the indulgence in this way i arrange groups of a hundred years each of which i keep a careful account it's a pity that we can't do with them as with money put them out at interest for in that way we should be able to save more souls believe me and do as i do well i do it a better way remarked sister sipa what better demanded the astonished rufa that can't be my system can't be improved upon listen a moment and you'll be convinced sister said old sipa in a tone of vexation how is it let's hear exclaimed the other after coughing ceremoniously the old woman began with great care you know very well that by saying the bendita sea tu purezza and the senor mio jesu cristo padre dulcissimo por el gozo ten years are gained for each letter twenty no less five interrupted several voices a few years more or less make no difference now when a servant breaks a plate a glass or a cup i make him pick up the pieces and for every scrap even the very smallest he has to recite for me one of those prayers the indulgences that i earn in this way i devote to the souls every one in my house except the cats understands the systems but those indulgences are earned by the servants and not by you sister sipa objected the rufa and my cups and plates who pays for them the servants are glad to pay for them in that way and it suits me also i never resort to blows only sometimes a pinch or a whack on the head i'm going to do as you do i'll do the same and i exclaimed the women but suppose the plate is only broken into two or three pieces then you earn very few observed the obstinate rufa abba answered the old sipa i make them recite the prayers anyhow then i glue the pieces together again and so lose nothing sister rufa had no more objections left allow me to ask about a doubt of mine said young juana timidly you ladies understand so well these matters of heaven purgatory and hell while well, i confess that i am ignorant often i find in the novenas and other books this direction three paternosters three ave marias and three gloria patris yes well now i want to know how they should be recited whether three paternosters in succession three ave marias in succession and three glory patris in succession or a paternoster an ave maria and a gloria patri together three times this way a paternoster three times pardon me sister sipa interrupted the rufa they must be recited in the other way you mustn't mix up males and females the paternosters are males the ave marias are females and the gloria patris are the children eh excuse me sister rufa paternoster ave maria and gloria are like rice meat and sauce a mouthful for the saints you're wrong you'll see for you who pray that way will never get what you ask for and you who pray the other way won't get anything from your novenas replied old sipa who won't asked the rufa rising 
a short time ago i lost a little pig i prayed to saint anthony and found it and then i sold it for a good price abba yes then that's why one of your neighbors was saying that you sold a pig of hers who the shameless one perhaps i'm like you here the expert had to interfere to restore peace for no one was thinking any more about paternosters the talk was all about pigs come come there mustn't be any quarrel over a pig sisters the holy scriptures give us an example to follow the heretics and protestants didn't quarrel with our lord for driving into the water a herd of swine that belonged to them and we that are christians and besides brethren of the holy rosary shall we have hard words on account of a little pig what would our rivals the tertiary brethren say all became silent before such wisdom at the same time fearing what the tertiary brethren might say the expert well satisfied with such acquiescence changed his tone and continued soon the curate will send for us we must tell him which preacher we've chosen of the three that he suggested yesterday whether padre damaso padre martin or the coadjutor i don't know whether the tertiary brethren have yet made any choice so we must decide the coadjutor murmured juana timidly <laughs> the coadjutor doesn't know how to preach declared sipa padre martin is better padre martin exclaimed another disdainfully he hasn't any voice padre damaso would be better that's right cried rufa padre damaso surely does know how to preach he looks like a comedian but we don't understand him murmured juana because he's very deep and as he preaches well this speech was interrupted by the arrival of sisa who was carrying a basket on her head she saluted the sisters and went on up the staircase she's going in let's go in too they exclaimed sisa felt her heart beating violently as she ascended the stairs she did not know just what to say to the padre to placate his wrath or what reasons she should advance in defence of her son that morning at the first flush of dawn she had gone into her garden to pick the choicest vegetables which she placed in a basket among banana leaves and flowers then she had looked along the bank of the river for the paco which she knew the curate liked for salads putting on her best clothes and without awakening her son she had set out for the town with the basket on her head as she went up the stairway she tried to make as little noise as possible and listened attentively in the hope that she might hear a fresh childish voice so well known to her but she heard nothing nor did she meet any one as she made her way to the kitchen there she looked into all the corners the servants and sacristans received her coldly scarcely acknowledging her greeting where can i put these vegetables she asked not taking any offence at their coldness there anywhere growled the cook hardly looking at her as he busied himself in picking the feathers from a capon with great care caesar arranged the vegetables and the salad leaves on the table placing the flowers above them smiling she then addressed one of the servants who seemed to be more approachable than the cook may i speak with the padre he's sick was the whispered answer and crispin do you know if he is in the sacristy the servant looked surprised and wrinkled his eyebrows crispin isn't he at your house do you mean to deny it basilio is at home but crispin stayed here answered sisa and i want to see him yes he stayed but afterwards he ran away after stealing a lot of things early this morning the curate ordered me to go and report it to the civil guard they must have gone to your house already to hunt for the boys sisa covered her ears and opened her mouth to speak but her lips moved without giving out any sound a pretty pair of sons you have exclaimed the cook it's plain that you're a faithful wife the son are so like the father take care that the younger doesn't surpass him sisa broke out into bitter weeping and let herself fall upon a bench don't cry here 
yelled the cook. Don't you know that the padre's sick? Get out in the street and cry. The unfortunate mother was almost shoved down the stairway at the very time when the sisters were coming down, complaining and making conjectures about the curate's illness, so she hid her face in her panuelo and suppressed the sounds of her grief. Upon reaching the street she looked about uncertainly for a moment, and then, as if having reached a decision, walked rapidly away. End of chapter 18